friends, welcome to my channel, B Swain's Shoebox Sundays. I know it's been a while. I thought I would share, not an unboxing, but how did I make this video? So have you ever had stickers that you wanna pack in your box and you don't wanna put them in the box loosely, so you're looking around for something to put them in, a baggie or an organza bag or, or something you can slip them into? Well, I decided, okay, I made some of these pouches after watching a tutorial on YouTube for Halloween. And I thought, you know, those are really cute. Those would be really cute in a shoebox to tuck stickers in, note cards, prayer cards, a note, a photo. You could put lots of different things in these little pockets. So I thought I would show you how I made these. And I would, I thought I would also show you how I made this folder. This is just a folder with pockets. So you can tuck, you know, bigger sheets of stickers in. And I cut the paper down to size so that it would fit nicely in a shoebox. So first I'll show you how I made this. Okay, I use a piece of 12 by 12 scrap of paper and I cut it down to be 12 inches wide and 11 inches long. And I covered, and then I folded that in half. But then I covered the front and back of this little folder with a page from an old calendar. Uh, my daughters had gone to Paris and they both got calendars. And so these are outdated calendars. And so I used this page from the calendar to make this but I had another one and I also liked this one this one is like a French cafe this one has a little cafe and the Eiffel Tower in it so I thought I would use this one the first thing that I did was I took a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock so what I need to do first is trim this down to be 12 inches wide and it already is but I'm going to trim one side down to 11 inches. I've got my paper trimmer. And you can just use scissors if you don't have a cutter or a paper trimmer. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to score this. I have a paper trimmer that cuts paper and also a, you can change the blades in to get different style cuts. And edges and this actually is a scoring blade so i'm going to turn it on the 12 inch side and i'm going to trim it at or score it down the middle at six inches and if you don't have one of these you could just fold it you know just fold it in half and then crease it this trimmer actually made this nice score line and so i'm going to fold Fold it on the score line. But anyway, I'm going to burnish that down with my bone folder here. You can just use your finger to just get a really good burnish on that fold. You can leave it just like this, but I'm, I want to put this calendar on the front and back. Is I'm going to trim this down to two panels. Each is going to be six inches wide. I'm going to trim that at six inches. So I put it in my trimmer this way and I trim at 11 inches. There we go. I have my front and my back cover. And to adhere them on, you could use whatever kind of glue you have. You could use a tape runner with double-sided tape. I usually use craft glue but because this calendar paper is kind of thin you know it's pretty thin paper and I don't want glue bumps I'm gonna use my tape runner with my double-sided tape so I'm just gonna put my tape on the opposite side that I want you know face down I want the other side showing and I'm going to adhere this to the front of my folder Looks pretty good. So then I'm going to put the other side on the back of the folder. 
be mindful of the of the direction of your paper and how the folder is going to open. I don't think my calendar page was quite 12 by 12. So this is going to have the cream color border around the edge and you know what that's okay finish that down really well okay now i need to make the pockets on the inside you can see the pockets here let me see what have i got here in this paper pad i kind of like this because it looks this the pattern on here kind of looks like an awning that it might be an awning on a cafe i want it to be three inches high There we go. So then the next step is to glue this down on three sides. Now this is cardstock, so this is a little bit thicker. So I'm going to actually use my craft glue instead of my double-sided tape, but you can do either. Now you, this is a pocket, so you want it to be open on the top to tuck things in. So you only put your adhesive down the side, along the bottom, and down the other side. There we go. So putting glue down the side, along the bottom, and you know, I want it, I don't want it to cover the fold because I want this to close. So, shoot, I may have to trim this just a little bit. Hopefully I can trim this without, I already put the glue on, I should have trimmed it first. So you probably should cut these to be about five and seven eighths wide. So I'm gonna trim just a little bit off this side as well. You see what I mean? You want it to fold, so you don't want it to go over the fold line on that side. So you want it a little bit shorter than six inches but not that much because you want as much room as possible to slide your inserts in. Once again, I'm putting my glue down the side and across the bottom and up the other side, leaving it open on the top. I'm gonna adhere that down. You wanna get it as close as you can to this edge, leaving a little bit of a gap in the center. And there I have it. I have my folder. So then, here's the front, the inside, the back. And I've got some stickers here. See, I don't, this might be too wide. I don't know if that's gonna fit in there. Oh, it did fit nicely in there. These are just some, uh, Paris stickers that I had in my stash. I'll probably use one of these folders in a Paris box that I plan to pack for next year. And so there we go. And you could stick other things in here. If you had like coloring sheets, the note to the child, a prayer card, um, how whatever you would like to, um, a game sheet, instructions for something that's in your box. It's just nice to have this when you want to protect something from being packed loosely in your box. And it doesn't take up any room, just the bottom of the box, kind of like a play mat. They could actually maybe even use this as a play mat, a flat surface. You could laminate it if you want. You would just laminate both sides and then tape it down the middle so that it folds like I do when I make my play mats. So there you go. Okay, so that is the longer folders for bigger sheets of stickers and such. But now I'm gonna show you how I make these little pockets to stick smaller items in, like skateboard stickers or a little prayer card or a photo or a note. And Here's a bigger one that I made with an eight inch by eight inch piece of paper. And this is really cute. I could use it for a shoe box. It's Halloween paper, but it just has black cats on it. So that would be really cute in my black cat box that I'm planning to pack next year. And this is 
an eight by eight sheet of paper makes a four by six pouch here. And a six by six piece of paper makes a three by four pocket pouch. So this is what I'm gonna show you. I'm going to make this with a tool that I have, which is an envelope punch board. So if you have one of these, great. If you don't, there are other ways you can make pocket pouches. You could just use an envelope and decorate the envelope. You could take the envelope apart and trace around it on different paper, like a piece of cardstock. That way you get a little thicker, sturdier pouch. Or what you could do if you want, I have my email in the description below. You could shoot me an email and I would be more than happy. Actually, I would be excited to send you a template. This is a template to make this pouch. What you could do is just trace around it on the paper you want, cut it out, and then I have these dotted lines here to show you where the folds go. And then you could refer back to this video to see how you fold it and how you adhere the flaps down. So the first thing I need to do is make sure this is six by six. It doesn't work right if it's not six by six. So I'm gonna make sure I have a six by six piece of paper here by trimming it if I need to. Okay, that side's okay. Turn it here. Trim this side to six by six. And then what I'm going to do is take my envelope punch board. And this is how you use one of these. Um, I purchased mine on Amazon. I got it several years ago when it was cheaper. I checked the other day and it was a little pricey. But I use this all the time in my card making to make envelopes. What it does, it just makes different size envelopes if you don't have the size of envelope you want. Um, and you can use it for other things to make boxes and pouches. Okay, so what you do here is, I'm gonna put it the direction I want. And there's a guide on this punch board that tells me that if I have a six by six piece of paper to make a three by four pocket, I need to line the paper up at two and five eighths. And there is a a, like a ruler across the top here. So you take the paper and you line it up on the left edge at two and five eighths. Okay, it's at two and five eighths. So this is the only time you have to measure. So you measure it the first time. This is a push button and you push that to punch a, a hole. So that makes this hole here, if you can see it on my template. And then you take the scoring tool that comes with this board. There is a groove right here on the board and you put this in that groove right there like that. And then you score up the paper, staying in that groove. So you just, and then you take this out, you turn it counterclockwise 90 degrees. So you turn it on this side now See the score line that you made with this tool? You're gonna line that up with this knob that sticks out here from this part of the tool. So, I don't know if you can see my, you can see my score line on the back here. Um, but I want the strawberries showing in my pocket. So I'm gonna turn it around and you can't see it as well. But what you do is you line that score line up with that little knob. So you don't have to measure, you just line that up. So I'm gonna line this side of the paper up, the score line with that little knob, and then I'm gonna repeat the process of punching and then scoring. Take that out, turn it 90 degrees again, repeat the process, line that score line up with that knob on the puncher score my line, putting the scoring tool in this little groove here. Okay, one more time, you line that line up with the little knob on the top, you punch, 
and make the score line. Okay, so it's done. And you can see where I've scored my lines and it has these triangular shaped flaps. And now I'm gonna glue it, but I want this side showing. I, I want, yeah, I want this side. You can do the solid color side and then decorate it or however you wish. This is where you get creative. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this flap down. I'm gonna fold this flap over. First I'm gonna fold this flap over. Then that flap and then this flap comes up. But I don't want this side to come all the way over here. So I'm going to trim this so that it looks like this, straight down the middle. You'll see the flaps come together. So the way you do that, the way I do it, is I fold this and then where you see this V here, you can cut down there, you could draw a line. What I'm gonna do, the, the easiest way I know to do it is just to take a straight edge, I guess I'll use this, and I'll line that up with the point of this V here and the top of this triangle here. I'll line that up and I'm gonna score a line down the center like this. And then I'm just gonna trim. I'm gonna trim on the outside of the score line so that when I fold it over, it covers up the glue strip. See, now I can fold it over. It makes the flaps meet right there. And I'm gonna put the glue on the inside of this flap. Not out here, but just in here. And so you don't go over. You could take your scoring tool again and you could make a score line here so you know where to put your glue and to not go over that line. So then you take your glue, you put a little glue on the inside of that flap, that little triangle there. Don't get too close to the edge because then your glue squirts out. Do you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to adhere this down. The top, tri the top triangle flap gets glued down. So put glue on the entire triangle on the top. And then we glue that down, burnish that down really well. Okay, that piece lays flat so that it's open at the top. Okay, so I have my glue on this side of that flap. I fold this over, adhere that down. Now what I did on some of these others that I've already made, not that one, <laughs> this one, I went around the edges again with my ink. Just to give them a little more definition. I forgot to do that on this one, but that's okay. And then this flap comes up. The other thing I forgot to do is this envelope. You punch it here when you make your template with the folding flaps, but on the top of this punch, and so you put your paper in here, but on the top of this punch, you can put your paper in and it's a corner rounder. So you can put the tip of the triangle in there and punch and then it rounds the corner here. And you can do that on all sides and it gives you a little bit more of a rounded effect. See, so now I have a little rounded point there. And now on this one, when you glue this down, you want your stickers to be able to go all the way down through the pouch. So you don't put glue on the entire triangle, just around this edge, all the way down here, up the side and up that side. You don't want to put it on the top of the triangle or in the middle because you want to leave that open so you can stick things in it. So I'm just going down along the side, up that side, but not across the top of that flap and not in the middle. Then you fold that up, you adhere that down. I got a little extra glue on there, which I always try to avoid, but I'm not very good at it. This art glitter glue is the best craft glue out there, in my opinion. The only thing is you can buy it from Amazon, but if you do, you can't order it in cold weather. So I think it's getting to the point now where they may not even ship it and you'd have to wait till March. Now. I really like this to stand out 
the edge of the top so I know where it opens. And I should have done this before I folded it, but I'm going to try to ink the edges here so that I can see where the opening is a little better. If you don't do that part, no big deal. So there I've got my little pouch. And then what you can do is you can put a sticker here. You can put a sticker on this side. If you That would be really cute if you use plain colored cardstock to make your pouches. You could decorate it however you want. I brought some. Now, I thought this would even be cute to stick band-aids in, wouldn't it? Here's a box of dinosaur band-aids that I recently got at Dollar Tree. So, it would be perfect for band-aids. You could stick little ephemera pieces. This isn't a sticker, but it's kind of like a 3D embellishment. And it says Super Kid on there. I'm just going to tuck it inside. Here's a little Happy Easter ephemera piece. You can put that on the outside. Stick it on the inside. I think these would be really great, great for like loose stickers. Like if you have skateboard stickers that you like to send. This little pouch would be perfect, perfect size for those. You could tuck a photo in here, a prayer card, a note. So that that's what I did. That's my, how did I make this little tutorial? I hope you enjoyed watching and I know this video got a little long, but I hope you enjoyed watching. So I'll see you soon, probably with an unboxing. Bye for now, friends. I always think of things after I've recorded the video. So here's a little update. If you wanted to put a whole box of band-aids in, but you didn't want the bulk of the box, you could cut part of the box, adhere that to the pouch like that, and then just put all the band-aids inside the pouch. I mean, it takes time. It takes time, but sometimes if you're in a crafty mood, you might feel like adding a little personal touch like that. I'm gonna adhere a piece of the packaging to this pouch. There we go. A little cute pouch for band-aids. I just wanted to show you real quick how this folder, how nicely this folder that I made for the stickers, that fits in a Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child Go Box. These are boxes that you can order from the Operation Christmas Child website, and I'll put the link to that website in my description below. Bye friends.